been trying to hide behind technical legal defences for three years in order to avoid any legal responsibility. And so today we are very pleased that the judge has rejected their arguments as legally flawed. <laughs> The Commission has taken litigation as part of the com complementary mechanisms of addressing the past and also emerging human rights violations. So we have been able to take a number of cases to court and one of them was uh, the Mamo case. Uh, Kenya Human Rights Commission stayed on course and I'm very happy that they were able to get the, the reparations and uh, the British apologize and there's going to be a a monument. The other case we have taken to court is the Nyaos case and uh, this is because uh, there were many atrocities which were also committed by the Moin government in the 1980s and also part of the 1990s and out of that process we have been able to, to, to see compensation for over 110 uh, victims. And we also have been working with people who were victims of post-election violence again to ensure justice for them and internally displaced people. The third case which, are, which we have been involved in is uh, the EPAS, the Economic Partnership case, which was uh, adjudicated, I think, in October last year. We instituted this case in 2007, and the idea was uh, to either find ways of uh, stopping the negotiations under the Economic Partnership Agreement, uh, and the second is also to ensure that after stopping the negotiations, the government is also able to create a mechanism for public participation because most of these negotiations have been undertaken in a very secretive manner. So public interest litigation was always an important aspect of our, you know, of, you know, of our work. The other achievement has been also organizing the different networks around these issues. For example, on the Mamo case, apart from the decision, we have also ended up with the, the Mamo World Federal Association, which has been also dealing with other issues affecting the claimants. Ar around the EPAS case, we have also ended up with the, the Small Scale Farmers Association, which is also a more organic network, which is also dealing with these issues, among other aspects, other violations also affecting small scale farmers. Our focus has also expanded uh, in a sense that uh, we are taking on a wider array of uh, human rights, expanding the base, uh, and also working with communities as agents uh, of their own rights protections. We are again are working on electoral governance but more from an equality perspective and equal access to electoral office for people from mar historically marginalized groups. Women, people with disabilities, the youth, sexual minorities, um, ethnic minorities, um, the people who get left out of the governance process. So you find that KHRC is now also very involved in um, ensuring that there is equal participation of uh, uh, groups that had um, you know, previously been excluded, whether they are sexual minorities or um, indigenous uh, people's groups or um, minorities that are defined uh, by their group or, or other identity. So KHRC has moved to ensure that there is equal participation of these other uh, excluded groups. We also are looking at the issue of citizenship um, and citizenship rights and are working on the issue of nationhood. Um, we feel at the national level there is a real challenge for the Kenyan people. We still have not quite developed an identity of ourselves as Kenyans. Um, you will find that there are parts of this country where um, just obtaining the documents that show that you're a Kenyan is a whole journey that is far more difficult because you happen to, be born, to have been born in a certain part. The other strategic objective relates to um, ensuring service delivery, ensuring that um, the way in which we roll out devolution as a country again respects the human rights principles and actually results in services being available to people no matter where they are. We also undertake work on economic and social rights. So under that we look at the value benefits chain, agricultural sectors such as coffee, um, sugar, floriculture, the worker who works on these things, the person that grows your coffee, that grows the flowers. When that coffee is sold, because we know Kenyan coffee is very, is some of the best in the world, 
how much of that money do they get at the end of the day? What are the conditions that they're living in? Additionally, KHRC has now become an actor at the regional and global level. So it is more involved in issues that ha you know, have to do with international justice um, and, and combating impunity at a regional and an international level. Uh, so you will find that um, in, in this new planning period, we're looking beyond our own borders uh, to establish societies um, and states that respect uh, human dignity and that are really human rights states. The final area that we work in relates to institutional development and sustainability. It ensures that we have the resources, that we have the kind of personnel that we require in order to deliver. How do we uh, multiply our sources of, of, of income as an institution towards ensuring that ultimately we are also financially independent. We do have a new constitution which offers us an immense amount in terms of the whole range of rights protection, um, the whole idea of diversity, the whole idea of integrity and accountability. Um, I mean, our, our governing framework is strong. I think KHRC um, in 2014 is facing some old challenges that have a new face and it will take time before a new culture takes hold. And so those of us who believe in human rights states and societies have to remain vigilant and have to continue working towards ensuring that we are all free and every single one of us has an opportunity to, li to live freely.